Hey everyone, I'm Anne Marie Green. And I'm Elaine Quijano. Early morning raids in a Paris suburb called Saint Denis may have stopped another tragedy. Police were targeting the alleged mastermind of Friday's attacks. Police arrested several people. Two were killed, including a woman who set off a suicide vest. We have with us now Elaine Cobb, who is on the phone, uh, who is with us now, rather, from Paris. Elaine, what can you tell us about these raids? They started at 4.20 local time. Residents in the neighborhood said they heard explosions, then gunfire, then it went quiet for a while. Now, the public prosecutor tells us that as the police went into this building in Saint-Denis, a woman set off an explosive vest and killed herself. They, there was a standoff then because the police left the building. Um, it lasted for several hours with sporadic gunfire um, and, the, and occasional explosions were heard in the neighborhood. Poli people were evacuated. Anyone who tried to come out of the building was immediately brought to the local city hall. Now, three people were arrested as the intervention ended. Two more were picked up uh, outside on the street, including a man who lent the apartment to friends who were looking for a place for friends of theirs. He claims he knows nothing about it, but some police are saying, given the extent of the weaponry they clearly had and the firepower, that surely he might have seen something. Two more people were hiding in the rubble. They too are now in custody. Now, Elaine, as we under sorry, um, yeah, rather, Elaine, as we understand it, the primary reason police raided this apartment is because they were searching for the alleged mastermind behind the Friday the 13th attacks. Do we know what led them to this location? It seems that it was, in fact, the female suicide bomber who led them there. She was flagged during some of the questioning of other people during the last several days. And they followed her and found her in the apartment. She set herself off, as I said. Um, another man was killed inside the apartment a little later in the intervention. But police haven't given us the identities of any of the people involved. So we don't know if Abdelhamid uh, Aboud was in fact in the apartment. It had been believed he was in Syria, but then there was rumors going around and suggestions and several police sources telling French journalists that it was him here. But as I said, no official confirmation yet. Elaine, can you tell us a little about Saint-Denis? What kind of uh, community is that? We know it's just outside Paris there, but you know, I'm thinking, for instance, of the neighborhood in Brussels, uh, Molenbeek, where we know, uh, you know in Belgium that was an area certainly where there were a lot of links uh, to terrorism. Uh, what kind of area is Saint-Denis? Saint-Denis is a suburban town just outside of Paris. It's on the metro line. It's where the football stadium is that was one of the sites of the attacks on Friday. Um, it's an area, it's a town with a very high immigrant population. It's also got a lot of unemployment, particularly youth unemployment. And it was the place that was the flashpoint for those riots in 2005 that spread across the Paris suburbs. It's not really known as a major place for terror suspects, but because of the, um, the discontent and a high Muslim population there, it's certainly usually on the radar for investigations. It must be pretty surprising that they were searching for Abdel Hamid Abaoud rather in that location when the thought was that he had already fled. Is it significant that they believe that he was still in Paris? Yes, it is, because we already know that Salah Abdeslam fled Paris early Saturday morning. He managed to get through police checkpoints because he wasn't yet on the watch list. So if they really believe the mastermind behind these attacks was still in Paris, it raises several other questions as to the operation and whether or not he'd been moving around the area. Was he simply identified too soon to leave? Or did he have other plans for Paris for further attacks? Elaine, had there been uh, up until today or before today any indication, you, you mentioned, you know, this woman who blew herself up. Um, I feel like perhaps that's the first time we've heard of a woman being connected to this, uh, to, to the alleged attackers here. Have we heard about additional people, women uh, being involved as well? 
Now, this is the first woman we've heard of involved in it. And if she turns out to be involved with ISIS, it would be the first time they have used a female suicide bomber. Let's not forget that the suicide bombers at the um, on Friday night at the Bataclan, the football stadium, were also the first suicide bombers in France. It's not something that's happened um, here before. You know, uh, witnesses report hearing a lot of gunfire, several explosions. Uh, any police officers injured in this? Yes, there were five police officers injured in the intervention, as well as the two suspects who were killed. Um, and also a police dog was killed, who they sent in first to check on the explosives. And so it was uh, one of the police said, you know, he was a member. She was a member of the team, too. So the police are still in the area. They've been pulling out most of the SWAT teams. But there's a lot of San Denis that is still cordoned off. Schools and universities closed and people were told to stay home. And if anyone was going into work in San Denis, they were told don't go into work today. Elaine, for our viewers who might just be joining us, will you remind us who is Abdel Hamid Abaoud? He's a man they believe masterminded these attacks. He's Belgian of Moroccan origin. He grew up in Brussels and he be quickly became known as radicalized. He's believed to have been behind failed attempts um, at um, attacks in France earlier this year, including that train shooting, uh, the Thales train, which was on its way to Paris. And they believe he was involved in that, as well as a planned attack that the official, that police here thwarted on a church in the Paris suburbs. Um, he's known as being very radical to the extent that he tried to get his 13-year-old brother to join him in Syria to join the jihad fight. Well, Elaine, I want you to sort of stand by. Uh, Elizabeth Palmer has been also working on uh, at the events unfolding overnight, and we've got a story from her. Uh, she's been in Paris. Let's hear from Elizabeth Palmer.